Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It's definitely a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time, virtually, uh, coming to you from my office on this morning. Uh, we're getting things set up on Facebook right now, and we're getting ready to pray and allow God to have His way. Dear the Father God, we tell you, thank you, God, on this morning. God, we thank you, God, for that opportunity, Lord, to worship you. God, we pray, Lord, that you anoint this word afresh. And God, have your way, Lord, you know what we've been struggling with, you know what we've been dealing with, Lord, you know, God, the struggle, God, from day to day. So, God, we ask God to arrest our minds and bring our hearts, God, into the service right now. God, to receive your word. God, somebody is standing in need of a breakthrough. Somebody's on the verge of giving up. God, somebody's on the verge of throwing in the towel and quitting. But God, we thank you, God, for releasing your strength on today. God, we thank you, God, for making whole. So God, so we speak peace, God, because you are the Prince of Peace. And God, begin to penetrate our hearts and our minds, God, to know, Lord, that you care for us. For your word declares, cast all your cares upon you and you, because you care for us. So God, we praise you. We worship God in advance, God, for what you're ready to do and release into our lives. So God, we open up our ears, God, and we hear your word. God, open up our eyes, God, to see in the spiritual realm. God, open up our minds to comprehend what you're saying to us in this time. And we will so careful with the praise, the glory, on them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want you to turn your attention to the Gospel of Luke, the 22nd chapter, uh, starting at verse number 39. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I believe uh, God has a word for the people of God this morning. Uh, I've been uh, struggling personally some things that I'm going to talk about in the midst of the sermon, but uh, I just want you to have a heart of prayer this morning and pray for me as I preach to myself this morning. Luke 26, the 22nd chapter, starting at verse number 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed. And his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood, falling down to the ground. <clears throat> uh, for this su subject on this morning, I want to talk from the subject when God doesn't take the cup away. When God doesn't take the cup away. People, God, it's important that we understand to my Instagram followers and Facebook followers that uh, it is inevitable, it is unequivocal that you are different. God, he has set you apart and the truth of the matter is, is that you're not like everybody else, meaning that you're going to have to go through some things that other people don't go through and endure. You are unique. You are one of a kind. You are set apart. You, child of God, you are special. You are distinct in your own uniqueness. And the reality is, is that everybody may not understand what you do what you're working on and what you got going on because the truth of the matter is is that you think differently 
the things that you've been thinking in your mind, the, the downloads that God has put it in your intellectual capacity, you know that you're different from everybody else. Not only do you think differently, but you also move differently. That there is a certain rhythm to your cadence and everybody cannot be connected to the cadence that God has instilled on the inside of you. Some of you all, your tempo is increasing. You have a fast tempo. And the truth of the matter is you're tired of procrastinating and you're ready to start to execute the things that God has put inside your life. Not only do you think differently, not only do you move differently, but also you act differently. You see your behavior changing. You see your attitude and your disposition changing. Why? Because you are different. Not only do you act differently, but you also see differently. God has been showing things. He has been revealing things to you. And you, you sometimes you feel that you're crazy. Lord, why am I dreaming this big? Lord, why do I see this? Why do I see this manifesting, manifest, manifesting in my life and materializing in my life? And the reality is, is because you see differently. Not only do you think differently, not only do you move, act, see differently, but you also respond differently. Some of y'all have been through some stuff that you told nobody about. People have lied on you. People have chastised you. People have tried to ostracize you. People have laid with you. And the truth of the matter is you've experienced pain. You've experienced agony. You've been discouraged along the way. And when people thought that you were going to respond one way, you ended up responding in a totally different way. Because God has wired and anointed you to be different. In our subject today, when God doesn't take the cup away, we have Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he decides to go pray. His disciples follow him. And, and when Jesus decides to go to a deeper place in prayer, he, he withdraws from his disciples. And, he, and maybe he withdraws from his disciples, people of God, because they weren't going after what Jesus was going after. And that's why it frustrates some of you all listening to me this morning. That it frustrates you to hang around certain people who are not trying to level up in every arena of their lives. They're not trying to go higher in God. They're not trying to increase their prayer life. They're not trying to live holy and the righteous life that pleases God. But they're trying to just stay on the same level. They have plateaued and it frustrates you to be around people who really don't want to be anything. People who don't want to level up. It frustrates you. It irritates you. It frustrates you hanging around people with the same old conversation for, for the past five to ten years. Ain't talking about goals. Ain't talking about trying to be financial free. Ain't talking about home ownership, ain't talking about trying to have a good credit score, ain't trying to talk about having a healthy lifestyle, but in this season, people of God, the people of God are getting ready to level up because God has called us to be different. Now, to get into the scripture this morning, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and the Bible corroborates that Jesus is in anguish. That means that Jesus is distressed. He is Suffering. Jesus is experiencing a level of pain, a, a level of sorrowfulness. Jesus, people of God, he is afflicted. He is experiencing levels of anxiety that he doesn't even talk about in this scripture. Jesus, people of God, he is in a low place. And what you have to understand is that Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And when you look at the Garden of Gethsemane, this means that Jesus is at the bottom of the Mount of Olives. Meaning that whenever you have the olives, it means that there's a season of crushing. There's a season of crushing. There's a season where you're perplexed, when you're mentally drained and physically drained and spiritually drained. This is where Jesus is. He is in the midst of agony. So as Jesus is in pain, as he is suffering, as he is going through, Jesus begins inquiring to God in the scripture where he says, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. In other words, Jesus, people of God, he is in a complicated place. And he wanted to know, he wanted to inquire if there was any other way which sinners can be saved by him going to the cross. So he asked the father, if it is your will. Father, I need you to take this cup away from me. I need you to remove this cup, from, this cup from my vicinity. And the truth of the matter is, Jesus already knew the suffering that he was about to endure. 
It was no accident, but Jesus knew what he was getting ready to step into. So, so in his humanity, here we go, he, he wanted to avoid the intense physical and spiritual anguish if it were possible. But at the same time, he wanted to do the will of the Father. And that's been some of our testimony that some of us have been in an intense battle. It's been intense. The struggle has been real. The intensity in your life has has picked up. You've been mentally drained. You've been spiritually drained. You, you've been tired. You, you've been exhausted just like Jesus. And some of us can cut the pot this morning that sometimes we model and repeat after Jesus. When Jesus says, Lord, take this cup away from me. And that's been my testimony this season of my life. Lord, take this cup away from me. Lord, I don't want it. Lord, there's been too much pressure. Lord, the anxiety, Lord, the stress, the mental strains, of the triggers that I have been enduring in my life. Lord, take the cup away from me. Lord, I don't want it. Lord, you can give this assignment, Lord, to somebody else. Lord, I got too much on my plate already. Lord, I need you to take this cup away from me. Lord, I need you to let somebody else have it. But the reason why Jesus has to keep this cup is because Jesus, was different. Let me say that one more time that Jesus was asking the Lord, Lord, if it's your will, Lord, I need you to take the cup away. But the reason why God did not take the cup away is because Jesus was different. Jesus was different. And the truth of the matter is some of you all, you may not understand why certain things happen to you. You may not understand why you have to stay in your assignment when everybody else could be free, when everybody else could be flexible. Here you are still dealing with the same old struggle here. You're still accepting the same responsibilities and the pressures of life that comes with it. So what do you do when God doesn't take the cup away? Pastor, I'm going through. I'm struggling in my spirit right now. Pastor, I need you to encourage me. I need you to uplift my spirit, Lord. Pastor, I've been going through. Lord, Pastor, what do I do when God doesn't take the cup away? What do you do when you, you attempt to quit, but God still keeps you in the swing of things? What do you do when you feel that your season has expired and your time is up? When it seems like, like God doesn't want to take the cup away. I need y'all to come in and listen to me. Your first point of execution should be connected to prayer. Let me say it again. If y'all if watching me right now, and those who come back and watch this, when, when you feel exhausted, when you feel depleted, emotionally, spiritually, financially, it just seems like all things are falling apart. Your first point of execution should be connected to prayer. When you initiate the dialogue of prayer and pray, Lord, let your will be done. Point number one, you get self out the way. Instagram, Facebook, you get self out the way. So when you start to pray, you, you, you remove your selfish ways, you, you move uh, selfish ambitions, and you remove selfish motives. So the truth of the matter is, it's not all about you, but it's for the glory of God. I'm getting ready to talk about it. When you pray, number two, you get flesh out the way. I want to spend a little time on this. You get flesh out the way. Now, now this is very critical and integral for the, for the text on this morning. It's because Jesus is now in humanity. He, he can now feel what we feel as human beings. Because uh, according to Hebrews 4 15, the word of the Lord declares, for we have not a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So Jesus, he feels everything that we've been going through. He understands, he feels it, he can acknowledge it. Why? Because he stepped from eternity into time. John 1 declares, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh, and the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as only the begotten Father of the Son, full of grace and truth. So Jesus, he lived. He walked the face of the earth. He, he, he was in his flesh. So, so when you pray, people of God, you get flesh out the way. That's why Jesus had a lifestyle of prayer. That's why Jesus prayed for 40 days and 40 nights in the garden, in the wilderness, and by praying in the garden against Simon, because he didn't want to get flesh 
in the way. He wanted to get flesh out the way. So in the same sense, the reason why we must pray, Lord, let your will be done is because you don't ever want to be found guilty of making irrational decisions. Let, let me say that one more time. That, that, that if, if you neglect to pray, if you, if you just make decisions based off your flesh, you do not want to be found guilty of making irrational decisions. Pastor, what are you saying? That some of us, we've made decisions that were detrimental to, that were detrimental to our spirit, detrimental to our life, detrimental to our, 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 our careers. Why? Because we made irrational decisions based on the flesh. That we did not consult God. We weren't operating in the spirit. We weren't flowing in the spirit. But we were just utilizing and seeing and feeling about our flesh. So it's very critical people of God that, that whenever you begin to pray, prayer removes the flesh. It, it, it prevents you from making irrational decisions. Meaning that uh, uh, you, you didn't even think about the decision. That, that you made the decision all right, based on what you were feeling and not consulting God, not consulting the Holy Spirit. So, so in this season, it's very critical, all right, people of God, that, that, that we find and, and, and we get into the place of prayer so that we don't mess up and destroy our lives. So the reality is, people of God, many of us, we've missed God. We missed the move of God because we made decisions based on our flesh and not hearing the voice of God. And I don't mind testifying that I was getting ready to make one of the dumbest mistakes of my life without consulting God. I was getting ready to do some stuff that I told nobody about. But I decided to pray about it. I decided to consult the Holy Spirit. And I'm so glad that I listened to what God was saying. So Jesus, people of God, I'm getting ready to preach for you, believe it or not. Jesus is in his flesh. Why? Because Jesus is the son of man. All right, he is in his humanity. He is experiencing excruciating pain. And one fleshly decision could have messed it up everybody. And, 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 and that's the thing with you people, God, that, that one bad fleshly decision can mess it up for everybody who's connected to you. So the reason uh, why God did not take away the cup all right, from Jesus, because Jesus was on assignment to bring salvation to everyone who believed. And if Jesus would have aborted uh, his assignment, then no one would be saved today. So I want you to think about your assignment on today. What has God called you to do? What has God uniquely designed and created you to do? What, who are the people who are depending on you to flow in your assignment? And the truth of the matter is, people, God, I don't care what you're feeling. I, don't, I really don't care what you've been going through. I don't care how bad the situation is. Is that when you pray, you get flesh out the way. Number three, when you pray, all right, you get your plans out of the way. All right, see, Jesus, he, he already had it planned out. He already had it figured out. Uh, he, he already knew, all right, that, that this was going to get ready to happen. And, and, and see, Jesus, he, 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 he already had it planned out, y'all. Look, I'm about to give this responsibility up. I'm about to give this assignment up to somebody else. This right here, in the, what the young folks say, this is for the birds. But he said, Lord, let your will be done. Lord, here it is, not my will. Getting your plans out the way. Getting your ideas out the way. Lord, not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. See, I, I know, I know. We, we all got it mapped out. We all got it planned out. Lord, oh, you about to do this for me in this amount of time. We got our timetables. We already got it programmed in our heads but in order to ensure that you are in the will of God, you must allow God to have his way in you and through you. And as I was meditating on what to preach on this morning, the Lord began to speak to me and said, Pastor Ricky, just let me have my way. And I don't know who needs this message on today, but you need to lift your hands right where you are and say, Lord, have your way. Lord, less of me and more of you. Lord, I am depending on you. Lord, I'm leaning on you. Lord, I'll wait here in prayer until you give me answers. Lord, I'll wait in prayer until you give me direction. Lord, have your way in me and through me. So, God, I need you to penetrate my life. I need you to penetrate my mind, my heart, and my spirit. Because, Lord, I'm in a season right now where I need direction. I'm in a season right now where I need clarity. Lord, have your way in me. Your connection to God is crucial in this season, people of God. 
Jesus has every reason to quit. He has every reason, watch this, to forfeit his assignment. But he continued to go deeper in prayer. That's why, people, God, whenever you feel burdened, whenever you feel the vicissitudes of life, whenever you feel your soul and, and your life weighted, whenever you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, whenever you feel stressed out, maxed out, whenever it's taxing on your life, on your family, and going through domestic stuff in your life, whenever you feel that taxing in your spirit, you must be willing to go deeper in prayer. And the truth of the matter is, I've been in a season where I wanted to quit. I've been in a season where I want to give up throwing the towel. Look, I'm done with this. I am tired. I'm depleted. I'm frustrated. But I decided that I needed to go and pray. And to be honest, I'm all about being transparent. When you're depleted, when you're frustrated, when you're going through, sometimes you don't feel like praying. I can assure you that Jesus, it took all the strength in the world for him to say, Lord, let your will be done. Some of y'all right now need a strength right now, but I dare you. From the depths of your soul, lift your hands and begin to pray to God, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. This Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, that's the shouting point on this morning. Nevertheless, no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what I'm experiencing, no matter what I've been through, no matter how low I am, not my will, but yours be done. So whenever you feel the weight, whenever the spirit of heaviness creeps on your life, whenever the, the burden is hard to bear, whenever you feel like giving up, please remember you were created for his glory. Let, let me say that one more time because I, uh, some of y'all, uh, you're getting ready to abort your assignment. But I need you to understand to get to the foundation, to the root of things, uh, that you were created for his glory. See, Jesus didn't quite understand at the current moment, but God created him to be a world changer. God anointed Jesus to preach the gospel to the poor. God anointed Jesus to heal the brokenhearted. God anointed Jesus to proclaim liberty to the captives, to receive recovery of sight to the blind. God anointed Jesus to liberate those who were oppressed. And I'm reminded, I feel like preaching now, of the man who was born blind from birth. The disciples asked Jesus who sinned that this man was born blind and Jesus as I said neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of God should be revealed in him you got to understand child of God that some way somehow God's got to get the glory out of your story for every setback that you've experienced for every hole in your life God's getting ready to get the glory out of your story see I came to preach to somebody today that you're just not here just to be existing but God created you God Forms you up so that he can get the glory out of your life. And I need somebody to understand that and receive this revelation that everything you're going through, God is going to get the glory out of it. I know you're stressed out. I know it's taxing. I know you're discouraged. But if you can just trust God, get in the realm of prayer, God is going to get the glory out of your life. Look, people, God, you are not an accident. You are not a mistake. Everything that happened was a part of God's plan. Why? Because you are different. You are Instagram, Facebook. You, you are somebody in God's kingdom. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. God made you the lender and not the bar. He placed you in the class all by yourself. God created you for his glory. So no matter what you're feeling this morning, people, God, no, no matter what you're going through, no matter what happened and, and transpired in your life, God will get the glory out of your story. So when it seems like God is not taking the cup away, Lord, I got too much pressure. I got too much anxiety. When, when it feels that you're maxed out, when it feels that you're distressed, when it feels like your spirit is crushed, remember, there's still purpose to your life. <laughs> Let me say it again because I can't encourage somebody who, who you, you feel uh, you got low self-esteem. You feel like you're not good enough. Let me remind you that there's still purpose uh, to your life. See, 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 the reason 
why God hasn't removed the cup from your life yet is because God ain't through with you yet. I'm sorry, some of y'all don't use the word ain't, but let me say it again. The reason why God has to remove the cup from you, the reason why you still struggle, uh, Paul says that I was given a thorn in my flesh. The reason why it feels like a thorn is still in your flesh, baby, is because God is not through with you yet. See, uh, the calling on your life is too great for you to quit. The calling, your assignment, the destiny on your life is too big, it's too grand for you to abort your assignment. That's, that's why, people God, you need to hold your head up and stick your chest out and know that you're still somebody in God. You're still anointed. You're still appointed. You're still a light in the midst of darkness. There's still purpose to your life. Why? Because you're different. You're, you're, you're different. And I need y'all to get that in your spirit. The reason why God ain't through with you yet is because there's a purpose to your life. God hasn't written you off. Of, the devil may have written you off, but God still has you on his mind. That's why you need to lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you that you haven't forgotten about me. Lord, you promised, Lord, that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You're different, you're different, you're different, you're different. So Jesus says, Father, if it is your will, Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. Mm. Watch this. See, it looks crazy. Jesus looks crazy. He looks kind of stupid. Look, I mean, Jesus, if you're tired of drinking from the cup, if you don't want to drink from the cup, then don't drink from the cup. It, it looks crazy. Sounds crazy. It appears crazy. Looks crazy. Jesus, why would you stay in something that brings on frustration? Jesus, why would you stay in something that brings on pain and stress, anxiety? Look, Jesus doesn't make sense. If you want to quit, just go ahead and quit. And the reason why Jesus stayed in it, the reason why Jesus could not abort his assignment in our series, is because Jesus was different. Can't encourage somebody. The reason why you can't quit is because God made you different. It's not for everybody to understand. It's not for everybody to comprehend. It's not for everybody to, to, to receive. Family members not going to understand it. Friends, companions, co-workers, they are not going to understand why you stayed in some stuff that you wanted to quit. What God has for your life, people of God, it's not for the faint at heart. Everybody ain't going to be able to make it through this. But you're going to make it. Why? Because you're different. Jesus, watch this. He, 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 he was called to drink from the cup. Why? Look, I got questions about the text. Why didn't God appoint somebody else to drink from the cup? <clears throat> Why didn't God allow Moses to live into the new covenant, to the new testament, let him drink from the cup. Why wasn't Joshua? Why uh, didn't the prostitute Rahab drink from the cup? But it was Jesus. And it was Jesus because God called him to drink from the cup. Jesus, watch this, he was called to bear the cross. It, it, it wasn't for everybody, but it was specifically Jesus' assignment. The word the Lord declares, take up your cross and follow me. And sometimes people of God carrying the cross gets heavy. I'm going to preach myself happy this morning. Let me say that one more time. Now, sometimes, whatever your assignment is, whatever your assignment is in the kingdom of God, whatever your assignment is in the natural realm, whatever you've been working on, sometimes carrying the cross gets heavy. It will be physically taxing on your body. Jesus, people of God, he had to physically endure the cross on his back, on his shoulder. So I want you to pause parenthetically, and I, I want you to imagine Jesus carrying the cross up the hill of Golgotha, carrying the burden, the weight of the world on his shoulders, should have aborted, should have quit, should have just stopped in his tracks, but he continued to bear the cross like a good soldier. Yes, people got it got hard along the way. 
Yes, it got discouraging. Yes, Jesus wanted to quit. But he did quit. Why? Because he was called to it. He was called to it because he was different. Somebody put in the comments, different. And sometimes people got as Jesus is drinking from this cup, as Jesus began to carry the cross up the hill, go got the Sometimes, watch this, you feel like you're the only one supporting it. <laughs> Whatever assignment God has given you, I, I feel like I'm in this all by myself. It seems like I'm the only one who cares. It seems like I'm the only one in this. Sometimes, it feels like you're the only one supporting. And it's sometimes it feels like you're the only one sustaining what God has put inside your spirit. So Jesus, people, God, he's having this conversation with God. I had this conversation with the Father, Lord, I need you to take this cup away from me. But God, it seems like I'm the only one here. It ain't nobody else here to help me drink from this cup. Why I got to be the only one? Why I got to be the only one to carry this burden? Why I got to be the only one to carry the cross on my back? Why does it feel like I'm the only one in this thing by myself? The reason why Jesus is the only one carrying the cross is because Jesus is different. And God is saying today that I've called you out. I've called you out. I've called you. I've set you apart to be different. I've, watch this, I've single-handedly selected you. And some of y'all are wondering, why is it you who feel the weight of the world, who feel the anxiety that you always going through, you always distressed, you don't want to need to, you always discouraged. The reason why is because God has single Handedly selected you. There's a providential reason why Jesus is called Jesus the Christ, with the Christ meaning the anointed one. And God is saying to your life that I cannot trust everybody with my anointing. I cannot trust everybody with my grace. That's why you got to go through. That's why I, I, I can only trust you because I can't trust everybody with my anointing. There are certain people who can carry the weight of my glory. That, that, that's why ooh, ooh, I feel God this morning. Uh, that's why you've been experiencing that burden. Because God has anointed you. And, and, and the anointing comes with a weight. Uh, that, that when you are a glory carrier, you're not wired like everybody else. You go through different seasons. You, you go through the storm and the rain because God has single-handedly anointed and selected you to go through it. I says I can't trust everybody with my anointing. And the reason you may be asking, Pastor, why has God chosen me? I, I, I try to live right. I, I pay my tithes and my offering. I, I, I serve in the community. I give back. I, I, I'm a blessing to other people. What, Pastor, why? Has God chosen me? I, I don't understand why I got to go through the seasons of frustration. I don't understand why some things don't work in my favor, Pastor. Why do I got to be the one waiting? I, I'm a praiser. I'm a worshiper. I, I do everything right. I dot every I, I cross every T. Pastor, why do I have to go through before I formed you in the womb? <laughs> I knew you. But before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So before you were even born, before you entered into your mother's womb, God knew everything that you're going to have to go through. Because he sanctifies you. He set you apart. He, he called you to be different. So before you were born, God already knew the days you would be tired. He knew all the days you would grow weary in your well-doing. God knew all the times and seasons of frustration that you've been working on a project, haven't gotten a result that you needed. God already knew why, because he single-handedly selected you. God, who, he knew every disappointment. He knew every setback that you would have to encounter. But the reason why you ought to give God praise because I'm different. Lord, I understand now. I received the revelation that I'm not like everybody else. But God, you have set me apart. You have sanctified me. You have called me to be holy. Here it is, people. God, everybody won't understand why you stayed in it. They don't understand the destiny that is connected to your life. <laughs> 
but I see you in the future. And you look much better than you do right now. Therefore, my instructions to you as your pastor, as your covering, whatever you want to call me this morning. Therefore, you cannot pass up the cup. But saints of God, I need you to continue to drink from the cup. As frustrated as you've been, as tired and weary as you've been, as depleted you have been, my instruction to you this morning um, that you cannot pass up the cup and hand it to somebody else. Uh, you cannot abort your assignment and let somebody else do it. Uh, but God has anointed you. God has called you to do it. I need you to drink from the cup. <laughs> and what you have to understand this morning, people of God, is that no matter how weary you get, God has the final say. Let, let me say it again. No matter how weary you get, God has the final say. So I need you to go on and get rid of your little plans. Get rid of your little timetable. On when you need God to do this, when you need God to turn around. It's not about you this moment. It's about the glory of God. It's about the assignment that God has birthed you in the earth realm to produce and be a blessing to somebody else. <laughs> Jesus says, Father, if it's your will, I need you to take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And if you can manage to get self out the way in the season of your life, God's will will be done. According to verse 43, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. So people of God, I charge you this morning, as you begin to pray, God will begin strengthening you. I need you to hear me this morning. As you begin to pray, God will begin strengthening you. As you begin to pray, you've been looking for the, what do I do next? How do, what is the solution to my dilemma? What, what, what is um, the thing that I need to do? And I need you all to understand this morning, as you begin to pray, God will begin to strengthen you. Isaiah 40, 29 and 31 says, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Hallelujah. But they, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mend up wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I am here to release strength into your life this morning. That to those who've been discouraged, to those who've been distressed, to those who've experienced depression, I need you to hold your head up because God is strengthening you. God is giving you the strength that you need. God is empowering you. He is infusing you with his power. He is giving you grace. For my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect. For my grace is sufficient. It's enough for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. God is getting ready to give you the strength that you've been needing. You've been weary. You've been discouraged. You've been depleted. But if you can just wait on the Lord, God is going to renew you. God is going to give you the strength that you need. And our last verse, verse 44 declares, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. 
I want to encourage somebody for those who have been distressed, had levels of anxiety. You stay there in prayer until you're endued with power. You stay on your knees. You stay in the posture of prayer until God gives you fresh revelation. Until God gives you clarity, direction, and the answers that you need. A lot of people don't want to make the investment in prayer. But the reason why you get ready to make that investment in prayer is because you're different. You're set apart. You're unique. You're distinct. You Got to make that investment in prayer. You stay there in prayer until you get back into your normal self. Some of us can testify this morning that we haven't been ourselves. We've changed our disposition. Demeanor, attitude has changed. And God is calling us back to prayer. He's calling us back to the threshold, to, to, to get back or to the blue collar place, to the place of prayer. Child of God, don't stop praying. No matter how hard it gets, you stay there in the posture of prayer. Woman of God, man of God, get back on your face in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Jesus, he lost sweat as he was praying. He began to pray so intense that he began to lose some things. And I came today to encourage somebody that you may lose some things along the way. And it's when you increase the intensity of your prayer, God will begin to restore you. God will begin to make you whole. So don't be discouraged when things, when people begin to drop off. That is when you make a decision to get back into prayer. You may lose some stuff along the way. You may lose friends. You may lose connections. You may lose your job. You, you may lose yourself. But that is confirmation and a sign that it's time for me to go deeper in prayer. God is calling us back to prayer. It's going to feel like you hit rock bottom. It's going to tear you apart. It's going to be discouraged along the way. But it's in the midst of prayer where God still changes things. And if God doesn't change the thing, he's changing you in the midst of it. That's why you got to say, Lord, not my will. But Lord, let your will be done. It's going to feel unpopular. You may not get all the accolades for staying in that season just like Jesus did. You look crazy. You look dumb. You look stupid for staying in that place. But Jesus understood his assignment because he was different. What has God called you to do that is different? You're not like everybody else. You think differently. You see differently. You respond differently. What is God saying to your life on this morning? So as we begin to pray, God, we just tell you thank you, God. God, for stripping your people on today. Come on, can somebody worship God? Father, we worship you. Hallelujah.
Father, we give you the glory. God, strengthen your people today, oh God. Oh, we cry out, holy, holy, holy. God, we need your strength. We need your power. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask God to have your way in my life. Have your way in my mind. Have your way in my spirit. We come because, God, we need a breakthrough. We need your anointing, God. We need a strength of today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, saints of God. Begin to cry out. Begin to release a sound of praise. Come on, begin to release a sound of desperation that God is inviting you in, into his presence right now. Come on, begin to worship God in this tabernacle. Begin to worship God right where you are. God, we need your strength. So God, we're pulling on you, Lord. We're depending on you. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. God, we pray tonight, this morning. Lord, that you strengthen us. Strengthen your people today, oh God. God, help us, God, to hold on to the profession of our faith. God, in seasons of doubt and uncertainty, God, we will lean, lean and depending on you. So, God, we bind stress. We bind anxiety. God, the oppression has no place in us. But, God, we thank you, God, for your peace. God, we thank you, God, for peace. So, God, we pray for the mind on this morning. Lord, that you will equip us with your supernatural grace. For you are the God of the breakthrough. For you are the God of peace. Lord, you are our strength. Lord, you are our strong tower. So God, we thank you, God, for new beginnings. We thank you, God, for a new mind. God, we thank you, God, for a renewing in the spirit. God, we thank you, God, for restoration. God, we just pray, God, right now, God, that we have a better week that better days are ahead. So God, we hold on to the cup. God, we accept our assignment. God, Lord, that we, we receive and accept God with a great heart. God, we're not going to abort. We're not going to leave the place Lord, that you called us to be. But God, we thank you, God, for speaking to us. We thank you, God, for revelatory word. So God, we praise you in the midst of it. We'll worship you, God, in the midst of it. And God will give you glory that it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Look, people, God, I don't mind testifying that for the past several months, I haven't been myself. I've been out of it. I've my disposition had changed. I didn't want to be at basketball practice. One particular week, I took the whole week off because there was so much on my mind that was weighing on my spirit, on my mind, specifically my mind. And I just needed a break. And there's somebody who's been going through the same thing that I've been going through. That whatever you've been battling this season of your life is depression, Suicidal thoughts, sickness. God has the power to give you the strength. And I'm not telling you this because I want y'all to feel sorry for me. But I'm telling you this and informing you because I want y'all to pray for Pastor Ricky. That as Jesus was in humanity, I too have a flesh. That yes, I know you see the smiles, I know you see the success sometimes. But there's certain battles that I have when I struggle internally. That when I need to be on the altar, that when I need prayer, I was getting ready to let it all go. Lord, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm weary. 
I've been tired for exhausted for the past two or three months with just everything being poured from different directions and just life happening. And I was tired, exhausted all the way up until this past Friday. We traveled to Huntsville, Alabama for team camp and I was getting ready to call our athletic director and our coach. Hey, it's time for me to sit down. It's time for me to get some rest. So with Friday night, I said, Lord, I'm getting ready to quit this. This is not for me. I got too much going on. I got too much on my plate. I was out of whack. I, I felt the withdrawal. And if y'all really watch me, I started withdrawing from what I was called to do, which is coaching. I ended up passing the head coaching job, girls job to one of our assistants because I was just tired. I was just exhausted. I, I didn't want to be in practice. I just didn't want to be bothered. I just wanted to get away. And I began to evaluate and have an honest assessment of my life. I came to the conclusion that I was experiencing depression at the age of 31. Never thought that I would experience that because I plan, I, I'm happy all the time. I'm a business owner, you know, all is well, you know, got God on my side. But people got here to testify that depression hit me hard the past two months, not feeling like myself, feeling the withdrawal, not wanting to preach, not wanting to teach, not wanting to be around people, just wanting to lie down and rest. So in your prayer time, I need you to pray for Pastor Ricky Taylor. I need it. I've been depleted. But on Friday night, I went to sleep around 8 or 9 o'clock. I used to go over to sleep around 12 midnight. I went to sleep at 9, and I woke up around 9, and I slept for about 12 hours. And Saturday morning, I woke up refreshed. I woke up revived. I felt my energy and passion. I still got a little stuff I'm dealing with, but I do feel better. Uh, but all up until this past Friday, for the past two months, I've been depressed. The symptoms have been there. The withdrawal has been there. Not having the zeal and the passion like I used to. So you all pray for me as I pray for you. Arena Praise, thank you all for entrusting me to serve in this capacity. I appreciate you all for being there for me. But I wanted to share my heart that Pastor has been going through too. I've been down, I've been depleted too. So I'll be receiving counseling and from leaders of the community and calling spiritual leaders to pour into me, to give me the strength that I need so I don't make a decision, an irrational decision. So I don't make a decision based off my flesh. So y'all pray for me. I love you. And there may be somebody watching me right now who've been distressed, been depleted, feel like you're in the Mount of Olives. The, the crushing has been there. I want to encourage you, child of God, that God has a grace. He has enough strength to give you what you need. His grace is enough for you. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. So whenever you feel down, your first resort should be to get into prayer. Although it's hard, it's complicated, you don't feel like it, you'll receive your strength in the midst of prayer. Because when Jesus got into prayer, the angel of the Lord visited him and strengthened him. If you're looking for strength of the day, strength is made available right now. You don't have to cry another day, you don't have to live in pain, you don't have to live in stress. But when you look at the name Jesus, we studied the name Jesus on this past Wednesday. His name means deliverer. His name means that he comes to rescue you. So whatever situation that you're dealing with, Jesus has the power to deliver you out of what you're dealing with. He has the power and authority to rescue you from whatever you're dealing with. So we bind anxiety, we bind stress, we bind oppression. Whatever that thing that has held you bound, we have a Savior named Jesus who can set you free. If you want to be saved today, you want to rededicate your life back to God. The only thing you have to do is confess that Jesus is Lord and 
believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. It's that simple. If you pray that prayer, welcome into the kingdom of God. God wants to make you different. So don't think you got to get everything right the first time around. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. Before we have all sinned and come short of the Lord God. But in the process of accepting Jesus, your personal Lord and Savior, He can develop you. He can sanctify you. He can make you whole. Thank you all so much for being live this morning. I want you all to sow a seed into the ministry. Thank you all for continuing being supportive and faithful, tithing and giving. That God is continuing blessing us. He's continuing opening up doors. He's, he's continuing making ways. So I want you to honor God. All right, with your substance, with your increase. And watch God bless your life. I love you all. I'm going to try to lie down to just meditate on the goodness of the Lord. But once again, y'all, I don't mind being transparent. Because there may be somebody going through the same thing that I was dealing with. With depression. The mental struggle. And I came to the conclusion. I was mentally sick. I wasn't well. I wasn't. I was done. Mental illness. That's one of the dangerous things because, you know, we as leaders and pastors, we, we tend to cover it up well. You know, look good. Hey, you know, ready to preach. But there's some things that we deal with that we really don't discuss. But I open up my heart to pour out to you all to let y'all know that I'm human just like you. I go through just like you. So don't ever feel that you're too good enough to communicate with someone else to let them know what you're dealing with. Because you no longer have to suffer in silence. And there's somebody there to intercede for you. There's somebody who actually cares for you. Pick up a phone, call somebody, let them know. Text my pastor this morning and say, Pastor, I've been battling with depression for the past couple months. And as I was texting him, tears began to flow from my eyes. I began to cry, I began to pour out because I was tired of dealing with it. I was tired of dealing with the emotional strain, with, with stress and got to do this, got to do that. Getting calls from them, getting caught just a lot. But in the midst of me crying and pouring out this morning, as I was lying down in my bed, God began strengthening me. That there needed to be a release of tears for God to pour back into me. So do whatever you need to do. You gotta cry. You gotta have a runny nose. You gotta lean on the shoulder. Do what you gotta do. So when God doesn't take the cup away, that's when you have to go deeper in prayer. That's when you have to trust him the more. I, I know y'all. I get it. Look, <laughs> I get it. It's hard to pray for yourself when you're going through this. It's a struggle. I didn't feel like praying for myself until Saturday morning, yesterday. But overcame and God got the victory. I love y'all. Pray for me. I'm, I'm out of here. All right. Pray for me. All right. As I pray for you. God bless you.